Okay, so let's play. It's playtime! <laughs> Brio Gordon, what can I say about this guy? He is incredibly unique. The Brio sticker right on the back, obviously no writing underneath. These four wheels right in front, these minor, these smaller wheels are, they can turn, but obviously a 4.6 configura configuration, sorry, 4.6 configuration before we add the tender. Once again, with this red plate or red, red piece that uh, connects the boiler with the wheels, same as the earlier Thomas version. This is a plastic piece here. We can see the stamp. You can see the markings on that. Very similar with, a, with modern engines. Big blue dome. This is a large domer. But let's talk about the elephant in the room and look at the tender. So they decided to go this way with both Henry and Gordon. I don't have an example of Henry. But this is a really interesting tender engine is that the stick just goes on there and he pulls it around and there's a little bit of play back and forth. You can turn it around quite easily, much more manipulative than you obviously could with a tender engine. Here's just a James, or sorry, with a magnet engine. So obviously I, I can't make the sharp corners as I could with a Gordon with, with this piece. But going uphill, the Brio Gordon has a disadvantage with this configuration. Let's take a look. So here we have just a standard setup. Here is Gordon and three express coaches. Why? Because Gordon has three express coaches. He's going to go up this hill. And I just like to point out that this is all, you know, learning curve, Tommy, Fisher Price, Thomas, the tank engine brand track pieces, the tracks, the straight tracks are all Thomas. The riser is all Thomas or the, or the riser piece and the foundations are all Thomas. As we all know, many of us know that the Thomas the Tank engine brand made by Learning Curve, Tommy Fisher Price, that has a little bit of a steeper slope or rake or grade even, depending on where in the world you, you are, than the rest, you know, Kidcraft, Imaginary, and Brio brands do. Let's take a look at Gordon. I want to really just emphasize what's going to happen with this tender of Gordon's when we go up a hill at this incline with all this weight behind it. I've tried this with two engines, but Gordon, or sorry, I've tried this with two coaches. But we all know Gordon has three express coaches. Let's just take a look. I really want to emphasize this. So we're just going to have Gordon come up the hill. Perfect rake. Once we get to the apex of the hill, oh, what happened to Gordon? We ha when you're pulling three and he gets to the apex, almost every time he loses his tender. It's kind of interesting. Uh, this does happen. Obviously, the Thomas the Tank engine has the bigger slope or grade. It happens with all the ones. It only happens when you pull three coaches. Okay, let's take a look at, at what was going on. On the different sides of the pond, I don't have a 96 to 2000 Gordon, but I do have a 2000 Henry. So this Henry comes from the year 2000, it says so in the middle of the wheels. Let's look underneath, you can see as much with the 2000 in previous years. There's no name written on the back, same as the Gordon, Not you know, no name written on the back. But let's just see what they were doing on opposite sides of the pond. So obviously not apples to apples, but we can expect that Brio... Henry and, and uh, Learning Curve Gordon were actually based on their, their relative models here. Looking at it, we can see, just looking at the boiler and the body, Gordon is much thicker, has a bigger circumference, is much rounder. The dome is a bit different. Lengthwise, Brio is just edges it out just barely. I'm just going from front plate to, to front plate. Looking at the tenders at the time, once again, same as with James, the wheels have a bit of a configuration or a, a different configuration I really this is just it just stands out the painted tops doesn't it I really just think it's it's just kind of quiche to me you know I've never seen that I've always just seen the plastic tops on top really interesting they're about the same length side by side overall length when you put the tenders on the back I think Henry is like honestly maybe a centimeter or a sixteenth of an inch longer but a much smaller face on Henry, of course, as with all the learning curves. Henry, of course, smaller face with much of the earlier learning curve designs as Gordon does. Kind of interesting that Brio really had a handle on things with the size of the face. Let's take a look at a more modern Gordon. Looking at the faces, the learning curve, Gordon learned a little bit more. It's got a bigger face, but to be quite honest, I think the Brio Gordon looks a little bit more like the actual Gordon. You can see the differences in the size of the smokestack. Uh, you can up, up top, you can see the size of the differences of the domes as well as the boiler markings. You know, fair enough, at the time, 2000, nobody was doing boiler paintings on the side. 
Still with the four windows as compared to the one big window that Henry has. I really kind of enjoy that. A little bit of the red markings. Once again, I, I really like this red plate that comes here on the Brio. It really just it pops out. And as opposed, you know, once again, the elephant in the room, Once as opposed to the eight configuration, we have a four or six configuration on Gordon. Let's take a look at the tenders and the evolution of the tenders. So the fours look almost identical as well as the red outline. There's a much bigger difference in the side of James as there was in Gordon. Once again, you know, it's just Kishi, isn't it? It's just Kishi having that painted on top. It's odd. And of course, the evolution of the magnet is a little bit flatter here. Now, of course, modern day Gordon has no issue climbing the hills with a rack with a full load of express coaches. So it does, that always has the advantage over this old Brio. Interesting to note on both James and Gordon, there's no Brio sticker or nameplate on the tender. But of course, that sticker is very predominant on all of our engines. So here we have everyone's favorite steam tram. Not under the number seven himself, Toby. Toby, of course, was, I think Toby was one of my son's first words. So Toby will always have a special place in my heart. Just to go right off the bat, we're, I'm just going to scratch over the seven to prove that it's actually painted on. It's not a sticker. I know that there was some speculation whether Brio had the seven sticker or whether it was just learning curve. Um, this one, once again, I don't know if it's between 96 or 2000. The sticker's on the bottom this time. It says 1996, as they all do. Just while we're looking at the bottom, look at all that plastic underneath there. Still a four-wheel configuration with our old steam tram, Toby. Really interesting setup. Let's bring in, this is a learning curve Toby post-2003, but before Tomy. We're just going to take a quick comparison. Look, looking at uh, getting them side to side, they're actually exactly the same size. It's kind of a bad representation through the camera, but they are exactly the same size in length as roofs go and the magnets all line up. You can see that the Brio Toby doesn't have nails in the roof. We're going to touch that as long later as well. Looking underneath, the learning curve Toby has a lot more wood. This is all hidden wood. But they stayed true to form. They had the wood, whereas Brio went very plastically, pl or sorry, very plasticky with their wooden railway platform, and they had the screws in the bottom as opposed to the nails in the roof. Looking around, we can ar around on the different sides. Big differences on the sides of the plastic with the Brio uh, Toby having these essentially steps that lead up to the doorways on all sides of. Of himself he doesn't have the handrails on either side that the learning curve does number seven on the learning curve much more pronounced than the brio toby the windows on the learning curve a little bit more there's a lot of details in the paint when you look down on it even the front light on top of it it's a little bit more detailed on the late latter uh learning curve brand Going into the back, same thing with the windows and the light. The learning curve brand is a little bit better. So let's get a close up on the faces. Now these faces are completely different. You can see that the learning curve, Toby has much chubbier cheeks, which goes with the character of Toby. And the learning curve, or sorry, and, and the Brio Toby, you know, doesn't he look familiar? Doesn't that face look familiar? It doesn't look like Toby, but who does it look like? Well, interestingly enough, when we bring in Mavis, well, this is a six-figure Mavis, but this is a learning curve Mavis, and we put the faces side by side, it's really interesting to note how alike the faces are. It's just a little bit of paint detail. Same face that was provided for them, but this manufactured by Brio, this manufactured by Learning Curve, possibly you know three to seven years apart, and it's just really unique how the faces look alike. So I think that the Learning Curve Toby is a much better representation, you know, with the chubby cheeks and all. But uh, I really like this Toby. It's, you know, wow. I mean, it's, once again, in fine to very fine condition, considering it's almost 20 years old or 20 years old. Really unique piece. Thanks for watching Kids Arts Play. And don't forget to, to subscribe.